Like we now, we don't learn how to shave from our fathers. It's a YouTube video. And so you lose something in that, in that bonding. So uh, there's a big bit in the new. I think that is something that really needs to be spoken about. The lack of fatherhood, which is leading to the lack of manhood, which is leading to the lost feeling that so many young men have. I want to talk about depression and manhood. It's kind of taken the Western world by storm, I would say, male depression and manhood. And it's something that is, it needs to be spoken about. And I think one of the main reasons for the rise in um, the quote unquote manosphere and the quote unquote red pill space is probably because a lot of men are feeling low, they're feeling depressed, and uh, the suicide rates for men have been skyrocketing during these days and times. And a lot of the time I realize and have realized that men need a space to kind of express themselves and, um, and just be men in a space where they don't feel attacked, where they don't feel like they can't be men, where if they do show a little bit of vulnerability, that it won't be used against them. I think a lot of the time men are reluctant to be vulnerable in front of women because a lot of the time when men are, in, are vulnerable in front of women, um, it gets used against them. Um, in a fight, in an argument, whatever, you know, a lot of men have had it done to them. So I want to kind of talk about the rise in the quote-unquote manosphere and the male leaders. And uh, there's a video that I came upon by a comedian by the name of uh, Jimmy Carr. It's a British comedian. He was interviewed by Stephen Bartlett. Some people know Stephen Bartlett. Um, he's a big interviewer, another UK interviewer. But Jimmy Carr is kind of known for his comedy over here. He's known for his comedy. And what I saw with this interview is that there's a side to um, Jimmy Carr that I had never seen before because if you guys want to know offensive comedy and you don't know Jimmy Carr, you might want to YouTube some offensive Jimmy Carr um, jokes. But um, in this video, he kind of touches on some things that I want to speak about. Because I think people suffer with depression and that's a, it's a disease. And it's incredibly serious. And we think of suicide as being something that stands alone. It's not, it's a symptom of a disease called depression, right? So it's the, it's the permanent solution to a temporary problem. You don't want to feel this way anymore, but actually you don't want to feel nothing anymore. Uh, you'd like to feel better. So it's that thing of like, I don't think we talk about it enough, but I think that thing of, you know, thinking about yourself all the time, I think it just leads to a, can lead to a, a melancholy, a sadness. I think depression is maybe a slightly separate thing. Not mm -hmm. to... Nick, no, no, yeah, but it feels, yeah, like, it's it feels like that's to... a disease. Yeah. And there's also a lot of sadness in the world. Mm. And you're lucky if you're sad. Because if you're, if you're sad, it's circumstantial and you can do something about it. You know, are, are you depressed because you have a serotonin imbalance in your head and it's a heritable trait? Or are you sad because your life hasn't worked out the way you want it to work out? Well, if that's the case, the latter, you're in luck because you can change that. But what I was saying is that a lot of the time is that people think that when they are in a sad and down state, that it's going to be like that forever. Hence the reason why so many men commit suicide. But what we need to understand, and it's it's hard because I know someone that was quite close to me that actually committed suicide. This is why I'm speaking about it. Um, they can't see anything else but their sadness. And so when you cannot see anything else but your sadness, you feel like the way out is to end it all. Um, but you just don't know what the next week is going to be like, what the next day is going to be like. Um, you kind of tell yourself what it's going to be like, and then you get into a rut of it being that way because you told yourself it was going to be that way. Um, so, yeah, what he said there was resonated um, quite a bit to me because he said, 
you are in the position to actually change it. I, I was really excited to talk to you about this particular topic because I've been trying to arrive at a position myself on why so many young men appear to be lost and suicidality has increased and there's, you know, these new masculine influences or masculine influencers that are really rounding up this cohort of young men. Who, who are we talking about? Uh, Andrew the An Tate? Andrew Tate's of the world. Well, Andrew Tate's interesting, isn't he? Because um, who, who made the... I think John Mulaney made the observation, Trump is a poor person's idea of what a rich person looks like. <laughs> yeah, I've got gold taps. And I think sort of Andrew Tate is like a 14-year-old boy's idea of what masculinity might look like. <laughs> like it's really... It, it's, and, and, and of course, nature abhors a vacuum. And there's a real vacuum for um, elders. Like we now, we don't learn how to shave from our fathers. It's a YouTube video. And so you lose something in that, in that bonding. So there's that, a big bit in the new... I think that is something that really needs to be spoken about. The lack of fatherhood, which is leading to the lack of manhood, which is leading to the lost feeling that so many young men have. He said that we used to learn to shave from our fathers and now we learn to shave from a YouTube video. We used to learn to put on a tie because of our fathers and now we learn that from a YouTube video. So there's a disconnect between the younger generation and the older generation and I think the younger generation are now being taught via the social media game they're being taught via the um social media videos they're not being taught by people that are hands-on with them and i think that is one of the main reasons why the people like andrew tate like he spoke about can rise to fame because as well as andrew tate being a man and standing on everything that he says he's a father figure to a lot of these boys and so you lose something in that in that bonding so and there's a big bit in the new show where I give a young guy, an audience member, a pretty tough time. Like we have the talk and I give them advice on how to uh, be with a woman. And it's, I'm not wrong about anything. It's really funny and it's really rude, but I'm not wrong about stuff. It's like, it's about consent. And it's, it's, I think it's really, it's really good because it's, I've sugared the pill of the message because people don't want to talk about it. People go, it's mm. obvious what consent is. Yeah, not to 17 year old boys. All girls. Ooh. It's like, actually, what, what does that look like and how should that be? So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really fun routine. It's a really fun routine to perform and to write. What is it to be a man these days? Because it's quite confusing. in term, Even the, the conversation around like chivalry and understanding, you know... Well, people talk about toxic masculinity and easy fix. Be a gentleman, be a mensch. That's it. This is done. Be a gentleman, be a mensch. Uh, you know, a, a gentleman is never rude by accident. It's Christopher Hitchens' line. Great. I, I, I don't know. I mean, my thing about young men today, if I was going to give young men advice, it would be get the right drugs and the real thing, right? In real life. Live in real life, right? So why young men are obsessed by video games, right? Obsessed. Mm. They're spending hours and hours and hours online playing video games. Why? Well, that's a proxy for career. Right, video games. You think about the levels of video games and what people do on video games. It's that's a proxy. That's like a uh, it's a it's a substitute for the career that they're not having. Right. And then they spend a lot of time, uh, you know, fapping to to or, Pornhub or you, you porn or whatever. Uh, and that's a proxy for sex. And my thing would be, George Orwell wasn't right. Our power won't be taken away from us by some authoritarian master. We'll give We're going to give it away for cheap dopamine. Right. And the cheap dopamine of video games and online porn and living online is, is, is getting in the way of real life. So it's risk, right? That's, that's what we're not allowing young people to do because we're, we're saying to young people, you can't take risks in real life. We're, mm. we're helicopter parenting. We're not giving them the freedom. How much freedom should you give a kid? As much as they can cope with, right? 14-year-olds used to be babysitters. They now need babysitters. Ooh. That's not good, right? So you should allow them more freedom in, in the real world because otherwise, the only place they get freedom is online. And no freedom in the real world. You're not allowed to go to the park and hang out, but you're allowed to do whatever you want online. Well, that's a, that feels like a very bad social experiment. Wow. 
Wow, it resonated with me. 14-year-olds used to be babysitters and now 14-year-olds need babysitting. I've got an 11-year-old boy. And um, it's kind of true what he said. Um, you know, I try to give my boy as much um, man talk as I can to kind of, you know, help him develop himself as a man. But the 14-year-olds in the UK and also around the Western world, in the UK, they run around with knives, you know, they're stabbing each other up. They don't understand the severity of life. Life is very flippant. And so when you have that mentality, you don't care about your own, you don't care about other people's. There's definitely a disconnect right now with the younger generation and the older generation. And I think that's what's leading to the lost feeling of so many young boys out there. And it's a reason why so many young boys don't know how to interact with other people. They don't know how to interact with themselves. And so they just interact online and online becomes their life. This is why part and parcel of being online, there's this thing now called cyberbullying, because you can usually be bullied in real life now. You bullied, bullied in real life. Now you get bullied online. And it's like, that must be life then. Because that you can only get bullied in your real life. But for you to be cyber bullied and you to be taking that on and then some people committing suicide from it, that must really be your life. And so I think it's a shame that the disconnect from, I guess, the media world to the actual social world is quite huge now where people spend such a large proportion of their time online and thinking that that is life.